Well, it's finally happened. HP Tuners has finally unlocked the Global B platform. Let's dive into a tune and check it out. What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the garage and the moment that all of us have been waiting years to happen, like three years at this point in time, has finally happened. HP Tuners has unlocked a Global B platform, which means C8 Corvettes, uh, the new CTSVs, some of the later model trucks and stuff like that. Uh, the Z06 is not supported yet and I have a pretty good uh, thought process as to why that is. I'm going to be weighing in on some speculation on a couple things as we go through and take a look at the C8 tune. Uh, one, the Z06 isn't supported yet because the dual overhead cam setup requires a lot more tables. I mean, a ton more tables and things like that. Now, uh, if you watch Pite's performance latest video, he talks about that you have to have a uh, adapter that allows you to relearn the system. And let me explain a little bit what's going on there. He, he brought up the Mongoose and the Cardac and stuff like that. Essentially, what you need is something like an MDI-2 that supports Global B that can be used with the AC Delco SPS system. Whenever the uh, ECU gets reinstalled back in the car, it has to have a serial network relearn on it where it goes out and communicates with the other modules in the car. And that's to make sure that everything's legit. If you don't do that, there's a good chance that you're going to break it. And I think, don't quote me on this, I think that is why HP Tuners is limiting this service to specific dealers, tuners, etc. right now is because of the fear that if this were to be opened up to the public, people would pay, send in their ECU, have it unlocked, send it back, they would just plug it in willy-nilly, and it would end up bricking the ECU, and it would cause a giant headache for everybody involved. And so the guys like Vengeance Racing and Pice Performance that are already in the group that have reached out to HP Tuners and got onboarded on, have gone through, they've made sure that they have the proper tools to do this stuff and that they know the procedure as far as whenever the ECU is getting reinstalled. So that's part of, you know, Global A had something kind of like that where if you took a, a module, say a BCM or something like that, as long as it was new and it didn't have anything on it as far as identifiers, whenever you plugged it in, it would talk to other modules and it would download the VIN and serial numbers and stuff into the module. But if you were to take a used one, it would put it in, it would end up probably bricking it at the worst. At the best, you would get a bunch of telecommunications codes, uh, DTCs, not check engine lights, mind you, but the actual diagnostics trouble codes for the different modules out there reporting back saying, hey, we've got an unrecognized module or an unauthorized module on the system. Global A takes that to another level, and so that's why this is part of the process. So let's go ahead and dive into this and you'll actually be surprised to see that there's not much new going on here. This thing is basically set up like a C7 6.2 liter. This is a C8 uh, with the LT5 I believe is what they call it now and everything's going to look the same for the most part. Like we're, we'll come in here and go under airflow because that's one of the primary things that we mess with and we've got our airflow frequency table. That's a funky math curve. Um, not sure why that's that way. But, so on this one, it's going to be a single input. That's something else. Probably, I believe the uh, LT5 or whatever the, the 5.5 liter flat plane crank uses to mass airflow frequency sensors. Uh, but everything else here looks the same. You know, all this stuff through here pretty much the same. We look underneath dynamic, you're going to see that we just have a VE correction factor. We don't have all of the VE tables that we'd normally have and we can verify that by looking under the edit and we don't have a virtual vi uh, volumetric efficiency editor. We have a neural network trainer on this one. So this is going to be critical that you know how to do neural network training for the speed density portion of the airflow tune. Remember, whenever we're in dynamic airflow, we're using a weighted 
algorithm in between uh, what we consider speed density and math based on transients and other things that are happening to determine how much weight is being shifted in between the two tables. This one's going to be neural networking. It's going to be critical to tune these properly. Uh, something else, as you can see, uh, this is going to be a virtual torque setup, and much like the fifth generation stuff, virtual torque is going to be critical to make sure everything else works. As part of the reason that people were having issues with the piggyback systems, you see a lot of the earlier uh, twin turbo setups and stuff like that, they were just killing transmissions and stuff. That's because the virtual torque has to be edited so it knows how much power to reduce during shifts. Essentially, whenever you piggyback a system like they were doing, uh, it skews all the virtual torque numbers off, and there's a good chance during a shift, whenever it's saying, hey, drop the torque down to 200 foot-pounds, it's actually delivering three, 400 foot-pounds during the shift, which burns the clutches up. So that is going to be one of the main things that's going to allow this to be better than any solution on the market so far and kind of the same thing under torque management uh, the tcms i believe have been unlocked on this i don't know if it's available to the public yet but it should be rolling out very soon but to be honest you don't really need to do much on the tcm side of it you need to be able to control the engine torque to keep from burning things up but all this looks the same. Uh, if you've been tuning fifth generation stuff, you know, you're, you're used to seeing this stuff. Our, our pedal demand, uh, our increasing and decreasing rates uh, for throttle response, all that's the same. Let's take a look underneath airflow and variable camshaft. We've got a single camshaft here. As you can see, it's going off the intake camshaft as opposed to the exhaust uh, from the looks of it. Let's verify. Yep, there's our intake numbers. Our exhaust should be zeroed. Yep, okay. So once again, whenever you go into virtual networking, uh, neural networking, which I don't have a network trained for this, uh, you'll have to use the neural network training on the side, on the HP Tuner side to generate this file out, and then you'll have to separate it out based off of the intake cam stuff. Uh, moving on, you can see that we've got turbocharger and supercharger tables on here showing that this is a multi-use ECU. So this would be the same one that's on the Blackhawks or the, the uh, CTSVs. So it's got all the settings in there for supercharger turbocharger, even though it's not used on this platform. It's the same ECU for all of them. Uh, going under fuel, we're going to see the standard direct injection style fuel tables on there uh, where we can really get into uh, some of the uh, injection timing and stuff like that to help offset. Uh, got standard stoic target at 14.1 and then we have an alcohol composition table. It's interesting that we've got two targets on here. I have to do some more research into why that is, but... Got two targets on there. Austrian sensors, be very interested to see on a scan. My guess is that they've gone over to wideband Austrian sensors on this. Uh, even though we have a standard bank uh, of 450, which indicates maybe it's still on a narrow band, but I would think at this point in time they've moved over to wideband from the factory. I sure hope so. rest of this basically looks the same. We've got power enrichment. Interesting to see that the enrichment ramping rate from the factory has been stepped up to 1. Uh, generally, you'll see these at 0.1 or 0.01. So it just goes to show on these Corvettes that they really want the PE to come in strong. Uh, the rest of this is all the same. I mean, nothing's really changed even from 4th gen and especially 5th gen. It's just another 5th gen application. So... Be anxious to see as more information comes out on setting this stuff up. So there you have it. Diving into the 6th uh, gen, I guess we'll call it at this point in time. The Global B platform taking a look at the tune. There's not a lot going on there that we haven't seen already, which is uh, reassuring. It's going to tune a heck of a lot like uh, the late 2020 or 2019, you know, 14 and on for the trucks. Uh, it took a little while 
you know, it'd be the same thing for the C7s. All this stuff kind of carries over. The big thing is going to be the neural network training. We can talk more about that in another video. But for now, I want to give you guys some insight as to what was going on with the C8s. Shouldn't be a big ordeal for a lot of the guys that are out there that have been tuning for a long time. So the people that are getting access to this initially to do this stuff, uh, they should have a good firm grasp on it. There's not a whole lot new on here that's going to throw, if anything, new on here that's going to throw anybody for a loop. So it's good to see that even though it became a lot more complicated to unlock these things that the actual tuning process is going to be about the same so listen that's it for now if you guys have any questions as always hit up the comments down below check out the patreon and don't forget abt always be tuning